Please welcome Chief Marketing and Solutions Officer, SAP Success Factors, Aaron Green. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Success Connect 2023. It is so great to have all of you here in Las Vegas. And I also want to give a huge shout out to everybody who's joining us from around the world from San Francisco to Sao Paulo to Sydney to Berlin, Port Chester, Bangalore, and everywhere in between. Thank you. I have to say, I love my job, but it's days like today that I truly value. Because it's days like today where we get to bring together our nearly 10,000 customers from more than 100 countries, all of you, to talk about our groundbreaking innovations, but more importantly, what all of you are doing with them. And of course, I cannot forget to thank our incredible sponsors, without whom this incredible event would not be such an amazing experience. So thank you to our sponsors. Let's give them a round of applause. So, quick question, show of hands, how many of you have not heard about AI? Actually, don't raise your hand. Uh, but thanks to technology, AI is once again really accelerating and pushing our collective capabilities to new heights as humans, as leaders, and as businesses. And this is a really exciting moment. But more on that in just a moment. Because that opening video, it brings up a really important idea. Potential. Now what do you think about when you hear that word? Perhaps it's an athlete dreaming of the Paralympics. Or an entrepreneur thinking about leasing their very first store. Maybe it's humanity getting ready to explore outer space. On their own, they sit still, they maintain. It's status quo. But what happens to all of that potential with just a little push? We have ignition. Our team of behavioral scientists took a look at what happens when companies really prioritize unlocking human potential. Guess what? No big surprise. Areas like employee performance, retention, and satisfaction, they all saw incredible improvements. And that's what we're here to talk about this week. Because the richest source of potential in your organization is your workforce. All that they are today and all that they can be in the future. But in order to take a look at where we're going, sometimes we have to reflect on where we've been. The past few years have certainly shown us that businesses need a very resilient foundation to weather the unpredictable. For example, things like a global economic downturn, disruptions to the supply chain, emerging trends like uh, hybrid work, and not to mention some of the more positive trends like a greater focus on corporate social responsibility and DEI and B. And as it turns out, we've all had to lean into these moments over the last few years. And at SAP, we're proud to be your partner as you navigate what's next. And today you are going to hear from some of your incredible peers who've not only weathered the unpredictable, but who have thrived during these challenging times. But each of us, each of you, is here for a reason. Because each of us is part of a really special community. A community that trusts SAP with your critical core HR and payroll, with your complex total compensation needs, and with talent management that helps your business excel today, and people analytics that helps you prepare for what's coming next in the future. Together, all of these place the employee experience at the heart of your strategic planning so that you can build that future-ready workforce. Now, about four years ago, we announced HXM as more than just a hypothesis because your people, well, they're far more than just capital. They are the most strategic differentiator in your organization. And since we announced HXM, everything that we have built has been designed with the human experience at the heart, from new products to completely new user experiences. We've delivered new ways to, gain, to drive internal mobility and to gain insight into the dynamic teams that you know are inside of your organization. We've created new ways for employees to collaborate and for them to share information. And with time tracking, we've reimagined the experience to put the employee first. And today, we're really excited to share what's next. Because together, we are all experiencing the dawn of a new era. Many of you, and we talked about this earlier, have read about AI, except for the two people in the back who raised their hands, but all of us have read about AI every day in the last year. 
And in fact, our research shows that over the last 10 months alone, interest in AI has spiked more than 400% amongst SAP customers. But according to Reuters, AI was mentioned 827 times across 76 tech company earnings announcements in Q2 of this year alone, 827 times. But at SAP, we are delivering solutions. We're not just delivering some headlines. So let's talk about it. Because this is an opportunity for us to really embrace AI to augment the way that people work. And that's how we get to ignite their potential. This allows us to maximize the skills in our workforces. Let's put this in perspective and think about the tech revolutions that we've all lived through in the past 20 years. Uh, some of you, like me, are old enough to remember the very first time that we got email on our phones. Remember how revolutionary that was? And now looking back on it, uh, perhaps we wish we hadn't. But we remember that first time we got email on our phones. But then the cloud progressed and app, more and more apps became available until suddenly, before we knew it, our phones were the most indispensable part of our everyday lives. And this is a way that we can think about AI. Because right now, we are in that phase of really rapid acceleration. And those individual use cases, they might not be revolutionary on their own. But together, they will drive an outright transformation of two core facets of every organization. One, the way that people experience work. And secondly, the way that we can unlock that individual and collective capability. And that's why we've delivered SAP Business AI, because it is AI that is truly built for business. And when I talk to our customers, in, including many of you here today, you've told me where your teams are spending their time. It's areas like writing the same job description over and over, parsing that pile of resumes, responding to one-off HR requests, or searching for the skills that you know are inside your organization, but they're just too hard to find. And because of tasks like these, 68% of people say that they simply don't have enough uninterrupted time in their day to focus on getting their jobs done, 68%. And this is where relevant, reliable, and responsible business AI can help. So today, we are exciting several really exciting AI innovations, all available this month, that will ignite the potential in your workforce. First, we are announcing new generative AI capabilities to elevate your talent, your learning, and your recruiting practices. Secondly, Joule, SAP's digital copilot, generative AI copilot, is embedded across the SAP portfolio to get your employees able to get their work done faster, to drive better outcomes, and to do it in a really efficient and fun way. And finally, the Talent Intelligence Hub is the engine that powers your entire talent and learning strategy and portfolio. I cannot wait for you all to experience these innovations over the next couple of days, and I'm happy to welcome to the stage my friend and colleague, Amy Wilson, to show you how SAP's Business AI helps unlock the potential in your organizations. Hello, everyone. How are you doing today? Well, last year, you may recall that we shared our vision for how talent intelligence will drive organizations to create future-ready workforces and elevated human experiences. Well, over the last year, we made many uplifts to our user experience, including the look and feel across the board with the beautiful Horizon theme. And we also took our transactions and created experiences in the flow of work, both in Microsoft Teams and in Joule. And how are we doing with that promise for the future ready workforce? Well, we recognize that for each of you to become skill-driven organizations, you needed a single skills model across your entire talent life cycle. Our vision was to ensure that you could understand the common state and be able to make top-down decisions about skill gaps, but also at the same time to drive a bottom-up culture of continuous and dynamic talent development. Well, today I am happy to say that this vision has become a reality. 
by integrating talent intelligence within HXM, you all will benefit from the simplicity and the power of a unified talent life cycle with a common language and a shared set of insights. And this extends beyond just HXM to our entire SAP ecosystem, from Field Glass to S4 to our partner applications. And in addition, we are leveraging this rich data to, uh, to dramatically improve the individual experience, from inferencing skills based on talent data to creating recommendations in the opportunity marketplace to our brand new learning experience. Now, I think it's time to see how one company, Cookie Delight, is using these innovations to help its business run better. I'd love to introduce Nadja Erickson, who will join me as Jada, an employee at Cookie Delight with big aspirations. Thanks, Amy. So I've been working as a retail associate at Cookie Delight for the last two years. And like some of my friends at work, I'm ready to do more. Now, the biggest news these days is that my company is launching a new line of cookies. And I really want to get involved. But I'm just not sure how. But what I do know is that like every cookie company, we also have a secret ingredient. And at Cookie Delight, it's SAP. Here I have access to a bunch of things that are important to my role in SAP Start, including my new virtual bestie, Jewel. Jewel can help me with things like requesting feedback and so much more. It keeps it fun, interactive, but most importantly, so easy to use. But let me check something else. I see I have some new recommended skills. I wonder where is that coming from? I did recently do a fellowship where I was learning about the ways we source ingredients, and I received some great feedback from my peers. So I wonder if this is where the recommended skills are coming from. Hmm. Yes, that is exactly where they came from, Jada. So our talent intelligence hub looks closely at your talent data, like feedback, and uses AI to build out your skills profile. That is great. I definitely wouldn't have thought to add this skill on my own. Now, learning the basics of supply chain management and being pretty good at market research is only going to get me so far. If I want to be part of this new cookie launch, I need to be excellent. I need to make sure I'm ready. So time for me to learn. Whoa, <laughs> this looks completely new. Is this, is this learning? It is. <laughs> this is the brand new learning experience that will be enabled for each and every one of our learning customers this November. And uh, as you can see with this new experience, you'll be able to quickly see uh, what it is that you have to learn to stay compliant, what it is you need to learn to succeed in your current job, and what you want to learn, like maybe becoming a cookie catalyst. Is today a want to learn day? Definitely. And I love how these personalized learning recommendations match to what I'm good at and what I'm actually passionate about, especially this course on supply chain management. Now, I have some time now, so I'm going to go ahead and start the course. So I obviously now so much know about supply chain management. <laughs> Amy, I think I'm ready to take some new opportunities. Well, on. before you do that, though, you've got to see something. So go check out your growth portfolio again. 
And you'll see that based on your completion of the course, your skill level has been updated to advanced. And you also have a new skill in your growth portfolio, project management. Again, <laughs> I honestly would not have thought to add this new skill on my own based on that learning that I've just completed. I could have missed out on new opportunities. Well, Jada, as you know, the marketplace will help you find those opportunities. But we've made it even better with this release. So we've added top picks for you, which are personalized recommendations based on your skills and interests. And now the opportunities find you. Hmm. So it looks like they need someone to help with the new launch of the cookies. That's exactly what I was looking for. And I don't have all of the skills they're looking for, but reading the description it makes me think I don't need to be a perfect match to apply. Mm, I don't know, should I apply? Should she do it? What do you think? Yeah, do it. I'll do it, I'll do it, I will apply. Fantastic, Jada. Done. <laughs> That's awesome, <laughs> love it. All right, well these innovations you just saw are all available, as I mentioned, with our upcoming release in just a few weeks. From skill inferencing based on your talent data to recommendations powered by SAP Business AI, we're delivering on our promise to help you build a future-ready workforce. But let's turn to the future now, as we continue to build on top of this foundation with deeper and richer AI ML. Our data scientists are working hard so that you can take advantage of some amazing innovation in 2024, including automated skill tagging of learning content so that we can bring you uh, better recommendations faster, skill-based planning and analysis so that you know where and how to improve your talent, and finally, a skill map that vastly improves the entire candidate recruitment process. Let's see what I mean. I'd like to introduce our uh, hiring manager from Cookie Delight, Jeff Hill. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> so, to make sure our new cookie launch is a success, we also need to hire a new product development lead. And finding someone with the right mix of skills is key. Now, I see I have some new applicants that have just applied, so let me take a closer look. And the two applicants are standing out with a really strong skilled match. Amy, can you tell us a little bit more about a skilled match? Of course. So skills can be and often are quite similar to one another. So just because you don't have an exact match doesn't necessarily mean you're not qualified uh, for the job if you have a close match. So for example, let's say that I am looking to hire someone who's great at Microsoft PowerPoint. However, I would be just fine with hiring someone who's great at Google Slides. Why? Because they are similar skills. And the AI-powered skill map will be able to help you understand this type of skill relationship better. And once you have this insight, you'll have an easier time comparing candidates. That makes sense. So let me go ahead and compare Carla and John. All right, so I clearly see that the skills in green for both Carla and John match the skills that we're looking for, which is great. But we need someone that also understands recipe formulation. Because let's face it, if the cookies don't taste good, the whole project is going to crumble. <laughs> now, Carla here, she has several skills that are similar to recipe formulation, whereas John doesn't have any. Now, I've never been able to do this type of comparison before. And without these insights, I probably would have moved them both forward in the process, only to find out later that John is just not a good fit. Or worse, overlooked Carla, missing a huge opportunity to have a more diverse team. Amy, I love it. I do too. <laughs> 
The Talent Intelligence Hub is what makes Jada and Jeff's journeys possible. Imagine how it can ignite the potential in your organization. After the keynote, head to the show floor and get yourself a cookie. I hear they're really good. And see up close all these experiences we just showed you and learn how you can adopt right away. Now, I am so pleased for our next segment to introduce Tracy Hughes, head of people success at SAP, and Tim Gregory, uh, managing director of HR innovation at Delta. Hey, good morning, everybody. You all look very sad out there. You can smile a little bit. We're supposed to be here to have fun. Yeah. So I have to say, first at the top, that Tim and I, we don't have any cookies for you, but I promise that this section will be just as delightful. So as an HR leader at SAP and someone who proudly uses success factors, I want to say that I am personally very excited about this new innovation. We can all agree that the rate of technological change is the fastest it has ever been, and that pace is only increasing. According to the World Economic Forum, more than 40% of skills and one billion jobs will change based on the introduction of new technologies by the end of the decade. Organizations have recognized that they need to find new ways to create their workforce and to transform it so that they can secure business outcomes and thrive in the cloud. So Tim, we love everything that Delta is doing to build a future-ready workforce with the Talent Intelligence Hub along with the power of AI. So, but before we get into the AI stuff, why don't you tell us a little bit about Delta's, you know, employee strategy? Sure. Thank you. Thank you for having us, by the way. And uh, thank you all for uh, spending some time with us this morning. We're really excited to share with you what we've learned uh, so far on this journey. Uh, for Delta, our employee, our employee strategy connects directly into our business strategy. Our business strategy can be described, we've got four components of that. And it starts with the employee experience. We call this the virtuous circle, starting with the employee experience, moving into the customer experience. The customer experience is focused on uh, an elevated experience, a uh, caring experience. Um, and for those purposes, uh, it's really important for us to, um, to develop that for, for our customers uh, and engage them in a way that is meaningful to them. Um, we also look to engage them in the communities in which they live, because that's also vitally important. And when we're able to engage our customers in those ways, uh, both within when they fly with us or in any of the channels that they engage, whether it's on the application or when they're talking to us on the telephone or they're in the air or at the airport, we want to bring that elevated experience personalized and seamless to them in every step. If we can engage them uh, in the customer experience and also uh, in their communities, people will choose Delta. And when they choose Delta, our investors choose us. And when investors choose us, it then allows us to invest more and more into the employee experience, which keeps the entire flywheel turning. What's really important for us when we take a look at both the customer experience and the employee experience, what are the basic table stakes that are required in both of those areas? From the customer experience, it's on time and with bags and clean. That's the basic handshake in the contract that we make with our customers when they fly with us. But we know we can do a lot more than that. On the employee side, what are the basics? The basics are benefits and pay. But we know we can do a lot more than that. So what is it that we're trying to achieve by going above with that employee experience? What we're trying to create in the hearts of our employees is a desire to bring discretionary effort to delight our customers. We want to motivate them to do that. So to talk about discretionary effort, we've all shared those experiences where you've gone to the grocery store and you start picking up a couple of things and your arms start to fill up. And very soon you realize you need a cart. And then some angel comes along, offers you the cart, and it created a moment there. Right. That employee could have stayed and focused on building out the shelves, building out the end caps and right. so forth, but instead they delivered that moment. So we want to create those moments, bring discretionary effort to delight our customers at our Perfect. scale. Perfect. 5,000 flights a day, wow. 300, uh, 400, uh, 400 locations. Uh, and that's the scale of that. That's incredible. So listen, I'm sure any of you that have flown Delta to get here could agree that they deliver some pretty great customer service. I know I can absolutely attest to that. So Tim, I get to speak to a lot of people around the globe, 
in different organizations, and something that always comes up is that we are looking to have a future-ready workforce, and that means a skills-based workforce. So I also understand that Delta has a long-term goal to fill 25% of corporate and management roles with current talent, and those are customer-facing roles. That's right. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how that works and how sure. your, your skills will help you reach that goal? Sure. For us, uh, skills, as we'd mentioned earlier, in terms of that employee experience being personalized and seamless, skills are really, really important, right? We build our skills, we take our skills with us. And when a company sees those, as opposed to org charts and job descriptions and so forth, that provides that elevated experience that we're seeking. Um, the journey to becoming a skills first, it's not gonna be some Monday morning, you turn on the light and all of a sudden the company is a skills first organization. It evolves over time. And one of the very first things that we did is we took a very close look at our job descriptions. And in cases where those job descriptions required a college degree, after really looking at that, we ask ourselves, do we care more about where their skills came from or if they have the skills? Are they proficient in the skills? Are they excelling in those skills? And we're able to remove 90% uh, of a college degree on, uh, for, courses, for uh, jobs that did not require that, which allowed us to go after that goal of bringing the front line, people who have front line experience working with our customers and moving them up into the managerial ranks, which has many, many benefits, influencing our strategy and so forth and keeping us customer focused. Sure. Wow, that's a really non-traditional approach. And one of the ways that we at SAP actually try to deal with this as a skills approach is that we look at specifically our customer development teams, sales, and our development folks, and we really want to try and assess their skills where they are today. And then we want to see where we want to go in the future. And then when we can recognize that we have a gap, we can figure out then how do we want to invest to upskill our own folks and to make sure that those investments are going to the right place to close those learning gaps. So just a few minutes ago, we got to see an amazing overview of the Talent Intelligence Hub from Amy and Cookie Delight. So, but you have some firsthand experience with yeah. that. Why don't you tell us how Delta's using the Talent Intelligence Hub to drive individualized talent development? Absolutely, Tracy. So, uh, and we've got two sessions today, by the way, so we're going to be going into a lot more detail about it. Please so visit. please join us later. We're going to drill deeply into our experiences and what we've learned uh, with the Talent Intelligence Hub. For us, we've been focused a great deal on uh, the three major components. There's a number of components that are all very exciting, but the one uh, that we'd like to talk about, the three pieces that we'd like to talk about first is the skills ontology. So the skills ontology is a vast library of skills that SAP and their partners have collected from around the world. On top of that, you have the attributes library. The attributes library allows you to go into the skills ontology and pull out the skills that you need to run your business. Right. And then the personalization piece, going back to what we talked to at the top here with uh, that elevated experience in terms of employees, yep. that growth portfolio allows employees to bring their whole self to the work environment, look at the skills that are necessary, begin to collect them and develop them. And that's really what our focus has been. But much more in a session that we've got coming up later this afternoon. All right, well, that's good to know and make sure that everybody gets there. So one of the many things that I love about this Delta story is your continued drive to ensure that employees are truly at the center of your transformation. Now, we've all heard about AI, except the couple of people in the back I thought that Aaron said didn't know about AI yet, wherever you are. Um, tell us how Delta plans to bring AI, leverage those other types of intelligent technologies, but keeping people at the center of it. Absolutely. So we're really seeing uh, the market evolve very, very quickly. There's new technology coming out all the time. We love our partnership that we have uh, with SAP. There's really two, two areas that we see developing. There is one where you have uh, a large language model and you've got wraparound applications. These applications form a, a UX layer that interact with the uh, employees and they, the learning and the reward signals that are received at the application layer uh, update that core la large language model. But in those models, the, the company, you don't really own the benefit. You don't own any of the training that, that is, goes into increasing the, the proficiency of that large language model. The other model uh, that we see that we're also exploring right now is where the large language model, the instance itself, is put inside the enterprise. So all the training and reward signals that go back to that large language model benefit us. And so what happens over time is that asset appreciates. And what's really interesting about this is that this technology is so fundamentally different than anything I've seen in, in my career. Uh, and it's, you can see by the gray beards, <laughs> I've, I've seen the, uh, you know, we went from client server, we went to, uh, from mainframes, client server, internet, and big data, and mobile, and so forth. But this technology is really truly, different. truly extraordinary. So with those, uh, those models where you're developing and training those models, yeah. they're gonna become extraordinarily important assets and valuable assets. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna 
build it, and it, so it's going to speak like a Delta subject matter expert who's got generations of experience. And then we're going to harvest from that neural network and publish it into the attributes library. Wow. So when you go into the growth portfolio and you take a look at what those skills are, it's going to read like a personalized experience for our employees where they're talking to Delta subject matter experts who've been doing this job for a very, very long time. Really? And we're going to have an ability to keep it fresh. So we've got an AI session coming up here. We're going to talk a lot about Absolutely. vector databases and all kinds of cool technology. So please, uh, please join us for that. So Tim, listen, I want to once again thank you for your time and for sharing all of these amazing insights with us. And we're going to keep this party going and stay on the topic of intelligent technology. So right now, I would like to welcome back Aaron Green to the stage, and he's going to continue. So thank you very much thank for your you time all. today. Let's hear it one more time for Tim and Tracy. Now, I hope you feel as inspired as I do, because it's companies like Delta that are, that are really soaring to new heights. I had to do it, sorry. That are really soaring to new heights in terms of how they look at skills and at talent. And now, I'd like to bring out my colleague, Shiva Sundarasan, our SVP of Applications Engineering. Shiva? Hey, Shiva. So, Shiva, we're going to get into products in just a moment, uh, but this is your first time on stage at Success Connect, so I'm going to go a little off script. How nervous are you? Ah, excited. All right, excited. I know if it started like this, but I'm super excited Excellent. to be here. Uh, Success Connect has been amazing already. Um, I just as we kicked off talking to customers and partners and analysts yesterday, it's super good. I'm always glad to hear how customers are using our product constantly in a changing environment stay ahead. So this is super exciting to be part of this. Absolutely, Shiva. And I can think of no better way than for all of us to talk about uh, the mega trends, the meta trends in workforce than to welcome to the stage Josh Burson. Josh? Josh, thanks for joining us. You bet. Wouldn't miss it. Excellent. I love hearing that. We're excited <laughs> to have you here. So let's jump right into it. Uh, we talked a bit this morning about how technology plays a really critical role in evolving and improving the employee experience. And when we look back at 2023, nothing is getting more attention than AI. And AI is changing the way that we actually interact with technology. And more and more, employees and all of us expect that our work applications operate very, in a similar way to our personal life applications. So, Josh, I'm curious, what are your views on the way that AI is changing the actual way that we work? Well, it's kind of funny. I mean, when AI became popular, you know, the last fall, and everybody thought it was going to kind of ruin the world and we were going to lose all these jobs, we are past that. So there was just, I was just reading this morning, <clears throat> Microsoft just did a survey of several thousand uh, professionals and found that 13% believe it might reduce or eliminate their job, but something like 70% believe it's going to make them more productive. So to me, this is a spectacular technology that is going to make your job as an HR person way, way easier and much, much more interesting, and every business professional as well. So, so I think it's really a sort of a superpower um, productivity tool that's going to make us all sort of superpowered workers. Superpowered workers, I love that. Shiva, let's get into some of those specifics. So last week, SAP introduced Joule, our generative AI co-pilot, which is generally available in SuccessFactors this month. Shiva, can you talk about the impact of Joule and the way that it's going to change the employee experience for our customers? Absolutely. With Joule, employees can simply ask a question in a simple, plain language and get answers in real time. Perform tasks without involving HR, find answers to questions which makes their life productive. Uh, this could include everyday transactions like uh, viewing a pay slip, the recent pay slip, which is the most re frequent request to HR. What makes Joule very powerful is the answers are based on the wealth of information SAP has across their portfolio. Right? So you can start the transaction with viewing pay slips. Next, you can ask about sales performance. And you can finish a transaction doing travel authorization. So it crosses the entire gamut of SAP portfolio. Josh, I know you are a, a newfound huge fan of Juul. I'd love your thoughts on it. 
Well, I think Juul is spectacular, <clears throat> and I think you guys are, are really leading the market. And, and the reason is, is, as all of you know, these uh, HCM systems are very complex. They have many, many features and panels and buttons and interfaces. And uh, you know, your, your average employee or HR person probably doesn't know half the things that are in there. So Juul will sit on top of this and make the whole system accessible to everyone. And I know eventually you'll be able to ask it questions, things like how's hiring going, what can I do to advance my career, and it'll, it'll find you the information you need. So I think it's a spectacular innovation. Excellent. And Juul isn't the only way that we're actually improving the employee experience. Shiva, I know this is a huge passion project, or a huge passion of yours. So can you share a few more examples of what our customers can expect around user experience? Very good question. Creating a compelling user experience is my number one priority, right? We are making success factor more accessible by integrating with where people are doing the work. For example, by including success factor into the flow of work with Microsoft Teams, employees can easily do transactions like creating time off, which makes it simple and efficient. We are going to continue to add more capability into the generative AI use cases. We started with recruiting, we will add performance goals, and we will go to Employee Central and more. It's exciting to hear about all of these innovations, but I think seeing is believing. So let's take a quick look at the ways in which some of our intelligent technologies will actually drive that improved employee experience. Josh, what do you think? Well, I mean, those of you that have been following me, I wrote an article about learning in the flow of work and gave a speech on it 10 years ago. And I actually didn't think it was ever going to be possible, and here it is. So, so I, I think these, um, these AI interfaces that allow you to ask the questions and get the answers in Teams, on your phone, wherever you are, I mean, you're going to get 10 times as much utilization out of these systems. That, that's absolutely right, and that's really how we drive an an improved employee experience. So Josh, staying with you, you talk to hundreds, if not thousands, of HR leaders probably every month, every year. What are they most excited about when it comes to AI, but also what are the, some of the tough questions that uh, HR leaders need to be asking around AI? Well, I, I think in the beginning, <clears throat> you know, some HR professionals you know, have been confused about what it is and can we trust it, is it safe? Because they've been using ChatGPT and they haven't had an embedded system like SuccessFactors to use. But, but now I think where we are, and the reason I think this, these announcements are so significant, is this is a practical, useful, productive application that is safe and built on the data in your company. It's not out on the, on the public internet. So, uh, so now the question is, um, you know, how quickly can we use it? What are the use cases that are going to be most relevant to our company, given where we are today? And can we teach people to use it appropriately? You know, there's prompt engineering. There's things you have to learn about how to use these things. It's not always giving you a perfect answer. So I think we're past that fear and uncertainty. And, and certainly those of you that are concerned about what AI is, hopefully you can get past that, at least at this conference, and really look at this as a, as a very useful technology. Absolutely. Shiba, what are your thoughts? See, at SAP, our approach to building business AI is build a system of intelligence, which is relevant, reliable, and responsible. As we build these use cases, we are making sure it is ready out of the box and you can consume it with high confidence. And SAP has a long track record of being a leader in AI ethics. We put data privacy, protection, and security at the forefront when we design all of our AI systems. We absolutely do. And we've seen some of the ways uh, just now that some of the AI and intelligent technologies are really going to improve and impact the daily lives of all of our employees in their flow of work. But of course, managers also deal with a lot of secondary tasks that can take up 
a lot of time. And I'm sure many of you deal with this in your daily lives regularly as well. So Shiva, how can intelligent technologies help people leaders? It's a very good question. Managers also have to complete many critical tasks, um, like creating a job position, doing approvals, or giving feedback to employees. Joule can streamline these tasks, even more complex one, and make it simple and efficient, which saves a lot of time. For example, let's take an example of creating a position. It can walk through step by step, which is simple, so that managers can finish this transaction very fast. And as we build more capabilities, we are going to integrate with the flow of work, which gives more time for managers to take care of their team members. So let's take a look at how we're helping managers improve their employee experience and their own experience. As I mentioned earlier, the real power of what, what we're showing today is when you bring everything together. And when you think of the Talent Intelligence Hub and combine that with Joule and generative AI, this is when our experience at work really begins to change. So Josh, you talked earlier about some of the reasons and the economic reasons that uh, why AI is needed for an organization. Can you talk a bit more about this? Yeah, I mean, I mean one of the things I think most of you are gonna face, and, I, and the economists are telling us this, is we're in this very strange period of time where the fertility rate has been low in virtually every developed economy, and most of the countries that we live in are going to peak in working population in the next 10 years. So there are gonna be fewer workers, which means you can't grow your company by hiring and hiring and hiring. There, there will not be, not even just the skills, the, the humans. And so in some sense, AI has arrived just at the right period of time to give us this productivity boost we need to grow. So, um, so if you have an old style management uh, leadership team that says hire, 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 that's not gonna work anymore. It's gonna be automate, improve, redesign, reorganize, and that's why these embedded AI tools like SuccessFactors has produced are gonna be just essential to your company's growth. They, they absolutely will. And Shiva, given the urgency that Josh has just outlined for organizations to really embrace AI, how, do we, how can we expect to see in success factors AI really surface for, for our customers? Good question. At SAP, we are strategically accelerating our investment with AI. With every release going forward, you are going to see enhancement in Joule, in generative AI, talent intelligence, right? These are all just, just the beginning. The employees will be one of the biggest beneficiaries of all these innovations. Recruiters will be the other one where the AI is going to make their jobs very productive so that they can keep up with the demands. So we are adding, uh, creating the job description, interview assessments, and uh, interview questions to make accelerating the hiring process faster. Outstanding. And this, and Shiva, you said this earlier, this is just the beginning. This is we will be delivering more and more of these relevant business use cases directly into the suite. So Josh and Shiva, what can we leave our audience with today when it comes to taking these innovations and implementing them right now for their, for their employees? Josh, we'll start with you. Well, well, I think that the first thing is to decide where you want to start. I mean, there are pieces of the SuccessFactor suite that are, that are you know, exposing AI right now, and so pick the modules that you think are the most useful in your organization, start using them immediately, um, don't wait for people to be worried about this stuff, and you're gonna see the return on investment quickly, and people will decide how to change their jobs around the new tools. Um, I don't think we need a one-year project to think about this. Uh, these things work right now, and they make life a lot easier for virtually everybody in HR. So it's the one-day project, and so well, the one-day. One All right, <laughs> challenge accepted. Shiva, oh, your thoughts? Uh, at SAP, we are committed to implementing AI with ethics, privacy, security at the forefront. We have led the market in human experience, 
and we are excited to help you embrace the systems of intelligence. Talent intelligence is just the beginning. We will expand AI use cases across our portfolios, and when you include HR, finance, supply chain, customer experience, and that's when you truly transform the business. Well, what a better way to bring all of this to life than to hear from some of our customers. Josh, Shiva, thank you for joining us today. Let's give our guests a huge round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Now, let's take a very quick look at our Innovation Award winners who are transforming HR today. Every year, SAP celebrates customers who work with us to make the world run better and improve people's lives. The 2023 SAP Innovation Award winners are finding new ways to empower their people and elevate their business with SAP success factors. Mod Pizza is automating HR processes so they can seamlessly and efficiently onboard 1,000 new hires each month. Standard Chartered integrated SAP Success Factors and SAP Field Glass to improve the employee experience for 85,000 employees and 14,000 contingent workers. BT Group has created a single integrated platform so colleagues, managers, and HR teams can perform every HR task from hire to retire on any device, anywhere. Nestle created an application that records employee hiring events in bulk, slashing processing time and improving data accuracy. Savannah Energy's HR Agility has improved transparency in the time to recruit process. Now hiring managers have an end-to-end -end view of their workforce. And Zymeworks optimized people processes with self-service management of all personal data and HR transactions, including recruiting, onboarding, and day-to-day -day employee management. We're so proud of these winners who are unlocking new levels of business performance and helping their people to thrive with SAP. Please welcome Chief Revenue Officer, SAP SuccessFactors, Marianne Abajay. Hello, and what, weren't those stories great? Congratulations to all of the award winners. And hey, we're going to hear some more stories, and I think you're going to love them. So please join me in welcoming Mihail Sutalo from Pandora, Greg Williams from Brightspeed, and Elaine Bergen from BT Group. Thank you all so much for joining me on stage. You are the perfect examples of HR and finance coming together to enable business transformation, but doing it with the employee experience at the center of everything. So we've got a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. Uh, so, Mihail, the Pandora story. I happen to love the Pandora story because you have literally touched millions of lives, including mine. So, I have <laughs> four <laughs> Pandora bracelets. Um, one with all UK charms that was given to me as a farewell gift after my two years in the UK. Um, one with all international charms, one with U.S. charms, and this latest one that was just given to me by a very dear friend that focuses on San Francisco, where she's from. That's such a great story, and this is exactly the story of Pandora. We connect people in those moments that matter, in the moments in life that basically we want to evoke all the time. And for that reason, I think this has... And me too. There's a people over there, yeah. <laughs> I don't have four, just, just one. Uh, but I do have more at home where I've got teenage Fantastic, daughters who yeah. are They're big fans. They're paying for a flight. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I mean, I wanted to bring you something then, so just as a little memory for this trip. Uh, so I have something for you, Marianne. Oh, my goodness. Thank and you, Mihail. And something Mahale. for Elaine. I love this. <laughs> Is this awesome? <laughs> And we spoke, so I know that your daughters also like Pandora, yes. so Thank this you. is Thank a little bit something Thank for you. you. I'm not doing opera, so this is it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. 
The store is up there in Venetia. Oh. So. <laughs> I love it. We got the ad going. So I'd love for you to walk us through the people transformation story at Pandora and how you went from an analog retailer to a future-ready organization that you are today. Sure. Uh, well, three years ago, we basically were really analog. We were managing 150 plus systems across all of our HR portfolio, and we used SAP success factors as, as a driver of transformation. Uh, in Less than two and a half years, we deployed the entire suite, and this is really transforming the experience. It's basically bringing the compliance to the HR organization and really changing the way of working, right? So now on top of that, we can uh, really build experience layer, so we can basically focus on our talent story. We can focus on our store experience, and basically, as, as a retailer that is uh, really dependent on a, on a brick and mortar store, all of these charms, 80% of them, 80% uh, of our revenue comes through the store. So our ability to impact the store experience through efficiency that basically we get through the uh, success factors, to understanding who our employees are, how we hire, how we manage them through the process of working with us and how we uh, develop them and how we do the performance management is really, really essential. So um, this is really directly related to our revenues also, right? So this is really a success story for us. Yeah. Wow, I love that. Thank you, Mihail. You're welcome. Um, and Elaine, so let's talk about BT Group. As you heard a few minutes ago, I did spend a couple of years in the UK and I was there at the very beginning of the program with BT Group. At that point in time, it was really focused on finance, but of course, a couple of years later, BT Group shifted and started looking at HR. I remember meeting with a number of the executives at BT Group, and they were all in on this program, which I think is critical, right, to make something like this successful. So um, the audience may not know this, but BT Group is the world's oldest communication company in the world. It dates back to 1846 and you have a massive footprint in the UK. So, for a company that's been around for that long, how was the decision made in 2020 to create a truly digital colleague experience? Yeah, thank you. You're, you're right. Um, uh, the, the finance teams were, were ahead of the game a little compared to HR, but, but yeah, like Pandora, 2020 was an important year for us in the HR space. Uh, we were, were planning to follow suit uh, with, uh, with HR transformation, uh, uh, anyone coming to a breakout session a little later on will get why I'm using the air quotes on the word transformation. But um, yeah, we, uh, we're 177 years old, it, it sort of felt like, uh, as I arrived in 2020 at BT Group, it felt like our HR systems were that old too. <laughs> <laughs> what I did find when I got there, though, was some fantastic work that had been done on defining the vision for our colleague experience. So we had mapped out everything from the moment that someone thinks about joining the BT group to the point at which they leave and everything that happens to them in between with a real sense of purpose around what it was that we wanted them to experience. I think it's probably fair to say though that in 2020, we then looked at the very complicated technological estate and said, well, that's not gonna do the job. Um, and, and bring to life that colleague experience, taking it from what was a vision on a PowerPoint deck into the hands of our people. So we, we stopped what we were doing and stepped back for a little while and, uh, and took an assessment of what was right, and that's when SAP came in uh, with us, and you're absolutely right, everyone was all in, very excited about that, and in 2021, we started what we called our iConnect program. Uh, and, and iConnect was pretty iconic for us in meaning that our BT Group purpose talks about we connect for good. Uh, so the program, really just in its name to start with, meant something to our colleagues. And it became uh, a, a program that was for our colleagues, not necessarily just for HR. Um, so in 2022, we went live with our first uh, big bang release of... Um, uh, of, uh, of everything, actually, at the, the core. So, Employee Central, recruitment, onboarding, uh, Qualtrics, <laughs> DocuSign, <laughs> open text, reporting and analytics. Um, we sort of really went all out learning, uh, uh, really went all out there with the, the core colleague experience in, 
in 2022, uh, I should say. So we started in 21, 2022 went live to all 100,000 employees in 44 countries around the world. Wow. We've then followed that up this year uh, with the full talent suite, a uh, big focus for us on what we call performance edge, being supported through success factors, um, as well as uh, a big focus for us on, on skills as we've been hearing about um, in the earlier sessions today. So, uh, so we're live now with a, a full suite of, 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 of job, job family associated skills um, that we're really starting to put to use through its connection into our learning activity and into our recruiting activity. Um, we're sort of circling back a little bit now as we head into the early part of 2024 to the foundations as we go live with ECP uh, in, in the early part of 2024. And, and then, I don't think you're ever done. <laughs> I don't think you're ever done. Uh, but we're done with the really big stuff. And at that point, I think that's the moment for us to really, well, we are already starting to step back and really think through what does this mean for the way in which HR gets done? Uh, we've very much put our colleagues in the driving seat already. Now it's time to turn attention on how we sort of really maximise that in the way in which we uh, are effective as an HR organisation. And it's been great doing that in partnership with our finance teams who've been working with SAP alongside us as well. That is great. Wow, you really moved at pace. You did yeah, a lot. We've done a lot. Unbelievable. So I still remember the first time I went to your headquarters building and I was looking at the plaque outside of the building. I took a picture of it because it said Marconi made the first public transmission of wireless signals in 1896. It was just a moment. But I know that that building is gone and you have an amazing new headquarters <laughs> building. That building's a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> but kind of like your HR system, brand yeah. new, shiny HR Correct. system as well. Yeah, yeah it's so. a big change for our organization and awesome. a big cultural change comes with it too. Oh, I bet. I bet. So, Greg, I obviously have firsthand experience with both Pandora and BT Group, but I don't have direct experience with, Bright, with Brightspeed, but I did grow up in rural Georgia, Rome, Georgia, to be exact. I go back there twice a year, mm -hmm. and every time I go back, I have trouble with the internet. So <laughs> I really, really appreciate what Brightspeed does, which is providing affordable, quality internet in rural areas. Mm -hmm. So I know the company has undergone tremendous growth since 2021, and I'd love to hear more about that, what the last few years have been like for Brightspeed. Yeah, it's really interesting sharing the stage with BT Group, given the fact that they're the oldest telecom and we're, I think, probably one of the newest. So we started in 2022 with 30 permanent employees um, and uh, an army of PwC contractors to help us get live. Uh, we implemented success factors, field glass, and uh, S4. But along the way, we acquired 3,300 employees from Lumen in an acquisition uh, just prior to go live. And that said, we acquired also the 40 FEINs, 29 uh, bargaining units, and we were able to uh, get that all implemented. Uh, today, we're at 4,200 employees on our SAP systems. Um, and in fact, today is our one year anniversary of going live with SAP and being born as Brightspeed as a company. Wow, that's amazing, <laughs> literally amazing. So I know you have a large contingent population, Elaine does as well. I'd love to just start with you, Greg. What role did the finance side of the business have on the overall SAP footprint? Yeah, well, the finance get up, getting up and running on uh, S4 and from the field glass portion, we import all that data into our LMS system so that for our contractors, they can train in our compliance training, our technical training. The S4 data is integrated into uh, WFS, which is our time system. We capture millions of dollars of project costs, and those are sent back to uh, S4 on, on a per pay period basis. Elaine, I'd love to hear your view very on similar, field glass very, and finance. Yeah, very similar. <laughs> we have a big contingent uh, organization that adds a, around 60,000 to our 100,000 employees. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, but uh, field glass is a key, a key part of the, the total landscape for us. And um, a very similar sort of experience, really, I guess, in the connection of, uh, of our contingent workforce through into learning applications 
uh, even into success factors itself, where we've got some of our contingent workforce that perhaps need access to broader systems and so on. Um, and then, inevitably, the, uh, the different payment processing that's required for a contingent workforce compared to your employed, employed colleagues. Absolutely. So we heard um, from Tim already about Delta's approach to bringing in intelligent technologies like AI. How do you continue to keep people at the heart when you bring in emerging technologies to your organizations? And maybe I'll start with you, Elaine, and kind of come down sure. the line. Sure. Well, I think it's really exciting. Um, it's definitely something we're excited about. And I think just even having seen some of the things from Success Factors this morning, um, you know, that's, uh, that's really great news to see that sort of progress. I think there are a couple of things from, uh, from, from our perspective that um, allows us to really think about the colleague experience. And the first one for me comes down to data. Um, I feel like with what we've been through, through our success factors journey, we're in a great place with a single source of, single master source of truth on our, our colleague and contingent workforce uh, data um, and our organization hierarchy. Maintaining that as a clean, well-governed, uh, in source integrity source of uh, of information is so critical for anything that you want to do with AI. And I think a responsibility that we take really very seriously um, in our HR organization, but also more widely in the organization too, uh, and how that data is used as we start to interact with, with AI. I think the second thing is, uh, is then just the, again, a responsibility that we have to think about the way in which this changes the world of work. Um, our purpose, uh, as I said at BT, is we connect for good. And so I think um, you know, there's a, a role that we have to play, particularly in HR organizations, to think about making sure that AI does good uh, for our workforce. Greg? From our standpoint, we know we're going to bring in AI into our customer service and our chat platforms. Uh, we are taking kind of a step back, and we've formed an AI council with various representatives from the business unit so that when we are ready to implement, uh, you know, we'll be there and we can be responsible with it and uh, make sure that it's taking, you know, lower level tasks and making sure that we're getting those directed to the human experts. So for us, it's very exciting, right? So last week we spent uh, a week with uh, companies in the, in the Bay Area, which uh, showed us what AI enables for us across the value chain. Uh, and that's very exciting. I think we will benefit from that innovation that Success Factors brings to us also as a native uh, uh, innovation and then what, what uh, we will work with externals. And I think one use case that I would like to point out is AI is there and it's going to stay. It's going to enable us to do much more than we do today. But uh, there are some steps once we standardize the model, as we did with the success factors, where the modularity of the success factors actually allow us to step into some areas which we would not do. And we did exactly that. I think post-pandemic, you can imagine running retail business where uh, all of the shops are closed. People don't want to join the retail anymore. We needed to tap into the areas uh, of, uh, of talent outside of Tra uh, traditional retail employees, right? Because they really didn't want to go there. They felt insecure. They, they were uh, uh, not willing to go back. So we built uh, an external application with an external provider that is basically compatible with SAP that help us to basically bring different different profiles in and typically if you're a store manager you would look for experience you know did you work in store what's your experience what what happened with us basically we brought completely different talent from hospitality from uh, airline industries can you guess what was uh, our who was our best employee in tell that me. year tell me a nurse nurse working selling jewelry right so i think this is also for me an, a story how opportunities are given to other people through the machine learning, through technology that otherwise would not be there because of our biases. So I think that's, that's a nice story. I love that. I love that. Look, I could continue talking with you three all day long, but we got to get going. So could you join me, please, in a big round of applause, thanking our panelists, <laughs> Elaine, Greg, Nahal. And on behalf of SAP Success Factors, we are honored to be on this journey with you and look forward to continuing. Thank you again. Thank you again.
So to hear even more about their amazing stories, you can join their breakout sessions. They're happening today and tomorrow. Before we officially close, I want to see if Aaron's out there. Aaron, are you out there and do you have any final words from the show floor? Thanks, Marianne. Remember Cookie Delight? Well, that's where I'm standing right now. And as we close out today's keynote, I invite you all to explore Cookie Delight and to learn about the latest SAP and partner innovations that are available to you right now to help you ignite the workforce potential that you have. And for our virtual viewers, you can also access Cookie Delight experience online. We have an incredible couple of days ahead filled with customer stories, conversations on topics like AI, talent management, and much, much more. And a really exciting keynote tomorrow powered by TED. I want to once again thank all of our sponsors and thank you to everybody who joined us on stage today, including our incredible customers, Delta, Brightspeed, BT Group, and Pandora for sharing truly incredible and inspirational stories with us. And again, thank you to all of you who have joined us at Success Connect from wherever you're viewing. We hope you enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you.